welcome to episode 16 of the Lit RPG podcast, uh, the only podcast dedicated to Lit RPG. I'm Ramon Mejia. I'm here to bring you the latest Lit RPG news, reviews, and of course, author interviews. Uh, before we begin, well, we got a big shout out to our, our supporters of the week. We have uh, two new supporters, um, Luke Chimilenko, who is uh, pledged on our Patreon support page uh, to $10 a month. So he joins Aleron Kong as our top supporters uh, on, on our Patreon uh, service thing. Uh, so thank you very much, Luke Chimilenko. He's uh, the author, uh, one of my favorite authors. So thank you very much for everything, man. I uh, appreciate all your support. Now, second supporter we're talking about this week is actually going to be anonymous. Uh, we actually got our very first PayPal donation and it was super, super generous. Um, now, unfortunately, I've contacted the donator thanking them, but they haven't gotten back to me. Let me know if they want their identity revealed or a shout out on the on the podcast. So I can't say who they are now, but uh, I want to thank you very much. You know who you are, and I definitely hope that your endeavors continue to go well. Okay, uh, now this week I'll be talking about the latest Lit RPG news and, of course, Lit RPG creators that are coming out this week uh, in new releases and reviews. I'll be re- reviewing Omega vs. Book 5, Homeland in Game 2, Stuck in Game, um, Bolts Strength Build 2.0 and 3.0, two new editions in that particular uh, serialized Lit RPG series. Um, so it's been a very full week, guys. But we're going to move on to, of course, Lit RPG news. <laughs> Now, our first story in Lit RPG New involves the game, Audiobook Edition. One of my favorite sci-fi Lit RPG novels, Opening Moves, the game is getting an Audiobook Edition, folks. It'll be available November the 29th, so not that far away. I'm personally looking forward to to picking it up uh, on Audible. Um, It's one of my favorite sci-fi, spacey kind of Lit RPG adventure stories. Um, I, I loved it as an ebook, loved it on Railroad, um, and I'm going to hopefully love it as an audiobook as well. I'm a huge fan of audiobooks personally. Um, now, if you want to sign up for a free Audible trial account to get two free audiobooks, folks, uh, please look, use the link in our show notes on the website uh, or in the show notes for this podcast. Um, we'll get a couple of bucks for referring you, and it'll help support the podcast. And of course, you get two free audiobooks. So good on you guys. Um, our next story, Aleron Kong and his new cover art. Uh, last week, I uh, showed you the new cover art for books one and two in the Chaos Seed series. This week, Aleron Kong has revealed the art for the third book. Now, this is new artwork. It's a little more fancy smanchy. Uh, it usually shows Richter um, doing something. And in this case, he's fighting uh, a giant, it's not an ice golem, it's like a rock crystal golem. It's in the story, folks. Um, it is a slight spoiler if you look at the cover, but hey, that's that's a choice. It is very adventurous. It does draw the reader in, so I can't blame the guy for wanting to redo the covers. It looks very, very pretty, so good job, Aleron. Okay, next story. Travis Bagwell has finally finished his author webpage, um, and to celebrate and encourage people to sign up for his, his, his newsletter about his stuff, he's giving away 10 free audiobooks for his series Awaken Online, Book One Catharsis. Uh, now, we've already viewed his book on the podcast and our, our recommendation page. Um, we loved it. I mean, I loved it personally. Um, it, it Adventurous, if you love necromancers, if you love exploding zombies, um, it's definitely a, a, a good book for you. Um, I'm looking forward to uh, I also reviewed the audiobook. It was really good. Um, so I encourage you guys to go sign up for his newsletter and you'll have a chance to win one of those 10 audiobooks and you can get it. So good job there. Now, just to let you know, the contest is only valid in the U.S. and the U.K. apparently. It probably has something to do with the Amazon giveaways um, rules. So I don't think Travis can change that at all. But I looked at the website. It looks pretty pretty decent for an author web page. Um, go check it out for yourself. We'll have a link in the show notes for you to click on and check out for yourself. Okay, um, another Lit RPG contest. This one is about naming a Lit RPG series. Uh, Michael Scott Earl has written a Lit RPG story on the railroad. Now, unfortunately, he's having a bit of a hard time coming up with a good title for his series. And he's, he's asking for your help. Um, and is running a contest with over $200 in prizes to get it. Uh, the first prize in, 
gets a $100 gift to Amazon. Second prize gets a $50 gift card. And the other prizes are signed copies of his novels. Um, click on the link in the show notes or on the Zora Road page um, and leave your entries. And there you'll have a complete list of rules. You do have to read the story uh, to, to qualify for the contest. So he's not only getting people to help him name his book, he's also getting people to read the series. Again, we'll have a link in the show notes to his story on the Zora Road and how you can enter that particular contest as well. Um, that's going to be it for our Lit RPG news section, folks. Uh, now, just a quick review of the upcoming Lit RPG. We have the Fandom Castle, Way of the Shaman Book 4, coming out in just a couple days on November the 28th. I'm personally looking forward to it. Um, I love Book 3. The audiobook especially was very nice. I'm looking to see how that kind of plays out in Book 4. Um, we also have the Cadet, uh, Squadcom Book 13, uh, book one out on December the 5th, The Way of the Outcasts, Mirror World, book three, December the 19th, Video Game Plotline Tester, The Dark Herbalist, book one on January the 3rd, 2017, and Your In Game Lit RPG Stories from Best Selling Authors. Uh, that is a co uh, collection of short stories from very famous lit RPG uh, Russian authors translated into English. Um, so that I think that'll be an interesting addition. It'll be out January the 20th, though. 2017 and of course we have the beginning dark paulton book one out on february the 7th 2017 that is vasily mehenko's new lit rpg series he's the author of the way of the shaman series if you love that uh this is interesting and of course you can read the first couple chapters on his uh, english publisher's website matthew john books i encourage you to do so uh, on to new releases and reviews <laughs> Okay, uh, first book we're reviewing this week, and by we, I mean I, of course, Stuck in Game. Um, it is written by Christopher Keene. The cover art um, does not do the book justice at all. It is a very interesting book. Um, it is 224 pages, uh, 299 uh, US dollar. It is available on Kindle Unlimited. Um, now, Stuck in the Game was brought to my attention on Twitter by Future House Books. I'm not sure if they're the publishers or just a promoter for the book, um, but they tagged the Lit RPG Podcast. Uh, now, unfortunately, they also described it on that Twitter um, posting as Sort Art Online plus Ready Player One. Um, so the story kind of had my expectations pretty high if you're going to describe it as that way. And unfortunately, it didn't quite mean it, but it's still a good story. Uh, the, the story is set up similarly to Sword Art Online, but that's really the only similarity to it. There is no similarity to Ready Player One whatsoever. So I'm not sure how they pulled that together. I get that they're trying to name two very um, popular video game type stories uh, to give readers an idea of what the story is about. Um I just didn't think they quite led up to those expectations. But again, putting that aside is pretty, pretty cool. Um, now, just a quick synopsis of the story. Uh, a young man and his girlfriend get into a car accident. They're both brain damaged and hooked up to a dream-based VR system. Uh, now, because of the delicate nature of, of the um, male protagonist's brain uh, and the mechanics of the game, if he dies in the game, he might fall into an irreversible coma in the real world. So it's a trapped-in-the-game story with a slight twist. Um, now, in the game, as he's leveling up, he doesn't actually realize that his girlfriend um, has not died. Um, he doesn't know her condition. He can only communicate with his mom and a few other people through the game interface, like a text system. But he he's essentially trapped in this video VR video game. But he does get a mysterious message uh, within the game system hinting that his girlfriend uh, may have connected to the game and then she may be trapped in, in a bad place. Um, and of course, this compels him to go outside of his, his kind of safe zone um, and try to find her and rescue her, of course. Um, and that's kind of the story. Now, um, just to let you know, that particular portion of the story is highly, it, it, it's described in the description on Amazon as a big part of the story, uh, but it doesn't really come up until about midway through the book. So um, I'm a little annoyed at that particular description maybe the author had nothing to do with it it may have been a publishing thing um but it's really kind of pumped up in in the description of the story but it really doesn't come up till like more than halfway through the book so um just be aware of that if you're looking for that particular plot point it comes up way later now besides that particular annoyance it's a really pretty decent story 
Um, I, it's a pretty fine trapped in a game story with lots of leveling, decent fights, um, and a very interesting magical system. Um, I give it a six out of 10. I would have probably given it a seven out of 10 if it wasn't for that particular point with, with the girlfriend being trapped in there with him at some point. Um, just because again, I felt slightly deceived because it doesn't come until like mid of the story, but it's highly promoted in the description. That's just me personally. Um, but it is definitely better than average story. Um, if, if that particular arc of the story wasn't there, I would have really enjoyed it more. Um, I love the leveling. I love the adventure stuff. I love the action. I love the description of the world. All that was very cool and interesting all in its own. It didn't need a lot of the other plot points, although it made it interesting towards the second half of the book. Um, that's just my opinion, though. So um, we'll have the link in the show notes if you want to pick it up. It actually came out in August of this year, but... Uh, it wasn't labeled as a little RPG or brought to the group's attention, so it's here now in this particular episode for you to enjoy. On to our next review, though, Homeland, in a game two, uh, by Kieran Uchi. 326 pages, $3.25, available on Kindle Unlimited. Now, if you haven't read book one in the series, um, you're probably not going to want to jump into book two. It's one of those stories that you kind of have to read the first one. I mean, you can get by if you just want to jump into book two, but you're not going to enjoy it nearly as much. Um, now, the main character, Tor, is returning to the game after winning a prize of over five million credits. Um, now, his last hack in the game was confiscated in book two. He has the money to set up a secure gaming site, a backdoor into the game, and military-grade nanobots to give him an edge when he returns there to stop the old bastards and the abuse of the regular players. If you don't know what any of that means, that's why I say read book one. Uh, now, this is my opinion on it. Um, I have really wanted to love this story so much. There are so many good elements of it. Um, interesting magic system. I like the world itself that it's set into. Unfortunately, I've always had a really hard time getting through this particular series of books. I kind of had to force myself to finish book one. Um, I got about halfway to book two and I'm like, uh, I have other things I have to read. And I kind of stopped there. It, it's not a bad book. It's not poorly written. There are some grammar and um, spelling errors that pop up on a semi-regular basis, but they're not so big that I have to stop reading the book. Um, it's just that the the main character never really connected with me. Um, the The very beginning book one especially kind of threw me off for a little while, and I had to push my way through that particular portion of it. And in book two, it kind of drops you off in a place where it assumes you know who the character is, who a few side characters are. And that was, there there was really no way for you as a new reader to connect to the main character, Tor, or Torn, since he has to re-roll his character. Um, So it's really hard to feel to care about the character and the things that he wants to do and the things that he he's he's that are important to him in the storyline. Um, aside from that, though, good, good fights, good magic system. Um, so if you're a fan of book one of Homeland um, in game, you're going to like book two. If you're not, um, you're probably not going to like this one either. OK, on to our next book. Omega Verse Book Five. Uh, this is a, a favorite of mine, written by G. R. Cooper. Good job, buddy. Just off the bat, um, it is two hundred fifty-seven pages long, four dollars and ninety-eight cents USD. It is available on Kindle Unlimited. Um, this is a very welcome addition to the series. The book starts out with Duncan or Wolfgar as he's that's the game handle in this book, in this game. Uh, he continues his journey to find his journey to find his lost friend Shannon. That's the really big story arc from Book Four. Now he's accompanied by the friends he's made in the game in this fantasy game world, and he's sent by the AI King Clive to investigate an outpost that has stopped sending messages to his to the king. Um, that's the setup of the story. Now um, the payoff is a little bit different, however. There is a, um, I'm not going to spoil it for you guys, but there's a plot twist in the story that is exciting and disappointing at the very same time. Um, again, I'm not going to spoil it, but I'll, I'll, the, the, the story arc with his best friend, Shannon, um, turns out a lot more different than I thought it was going to be. My, my guesstimation, my, my hypothesis when I read book one was that, um, it was going to make a three arc book thing. And uh, with, you know, her maybe turning up as a major villain at the end of book six or something. 
Um, so um, those are my expectations for this story arc. And it didn't pan out like I wanted to it to where I thought it was going to say. And so I was slightly disappointed in that. Having said that, um, it the plot twist, twist does open up some very interesting possibilities for the story that weren't possible before. Uh, so I can't say more than that without spoiling it for you guys. But it is interesting. I did like the story overall. It has lots of good again, action, adventure. Um, even some town building is included in this particular um, book, in book five that wasn't in book four. Um, this is a fantasy setting. Uh, so in books one through three of the Omega of, of this series, of the Omega series, it is sci-fi. It's a space combat opera thing going on in there. Um, in book four and five, it is a fantasy setting. It And the if you've read book four, you understand that the transition totally makes sense within the context of the game world. Um, so don't worry about it. Um, so it, it's an enjoyable series to me. I'm going to look at book. I'm looking forward to reading book six. I really enjoy this book. I definitely give it a 7.5 out of 10 if I'm going to read it. Um, but I enjoyed it. So good job, G.R. Cooper. Okay, uh, on to Strength Build 2.0 and 3.0. I'm going to review them together since they're short stories and they're in a, a serialized series. Now, last week we talked about Strength Build 1, uh, the book one in that series. Now, um, just to let you know, these are very short stories. There are 45 pages each, but they're priced accordingly at 99 sets each. Uh, they are also available on Kindle Unlimited. So if you have Kindle Unlimited, I'd say that's the perfect way to read the series. Um, it's a serialized to you. They're intentionally short. So the author gives you that upfront information on the Amazon description page. Um, now, in books two and three, though, um, the thing that I, I think was the most improved about the storyline is that the story, for the most part, takes place in the game. Uh, that's my favorite part of these stories when they go to the real world and the characters very woe is me, my life is crap. That stuff is the least interesting part of the story. I understand that the author is is trying to create a, a connection with the audience, make you feel for the character, um, and and ca- kind of describe the, his motivations for for playing this virtual game. And he does that very nicely. It's just not the most interesting part to me. That's me, though. Uh, the pacing is a little bit rushed. Still... But with each additional book in this series, the author seems to find a better balance between um, the action in the story and the actual story story. Um, it's still primarily an action-oriented story, um, but I've, I've enjoyed books two and three quite a bit more than I did book one. So I'm glad I gave it another chance I continued reading books two and three in this serialized story. Um, now, just to give you a quick explanation of the story, our hero Nick Stanners is play, still playing a live broadcast VR game in book two and three. And in book two, as a pixel runner, he gets dual wielding maces. And in book three, he gets plate mailed it up and starts swinging a halberd. Um, it's all on the covers, folks. So this is not spoilers. Um, besides that, uh, there are actually a very interesting plot twist in book three that I hadn't expected um, that I was you know, glad to see that the story is actually a story, not just an excuse to have fight scenes. Um, now, uh, some people are actually annoyed with the short format of this book series. However, um, I'm trying to appreciate it the same way I do an animated series or a television series. Each book takes uh, about 30 to 60 minutes to read and it has its very own arcs in each episode. Um, and I basically feel like I'd pay 99 cents for a TV episode of this quality. So why not these books? So if you think about it that way, um, I recommend giving it a chance. You just have to think of it a little bit differently. You, you may be used to reading two 300 page lit RPG stories, um, but they're also priced accordingly at, you know, three, four bucks or on Kindle Unlimited. But if you think of this as a television series, this matches perfectly with those expectations. So Give it a chance. They're fun. I hope that the author at some point will put the books together in an omnibus. Uh, that way he can satisfy everybody in getting a larger story together as well. Uh, and that's going to be it for the podcast, folks. We're done. It was a very full week full of new stories that came out just this past week. And I, I've enjoyed it immensely. Um, but again, this podcast only only exists because of your guys' support. You watching, you're listening. Thank you very much for taking the time to to go over these stories and to listen to me talk about the things that I love and that you guys hopefully love as well. Um, if you again want to support the podcast, there are tons of ways to do so. You can find out all the ways you can do so at uh, litrpgpodcast.com forward slash support. Um, 
But until the next time I see you folks and I talk to you, remember to go read some Little RPG. Mm-hmm.